Hello and welcome back to the Life and Nurse channel. Hope you guys are doing well today. I'm always excited for our drop days and we've got six new vintage pieces that we're going to be covering on lifeandnurse.com. Um, these pieces, uh, typically we've, we've kept it around four or five pieces, but this, this time we've decided to go with six. And I think the reason why was there were just some really interesting pieces out there that we wanted to explore. And I think the histories of these pieces are going to be extremely fascinating in the videos to come. So as I, as I always do, what I will be doing is kind of going over each of the pieces um, to give you just a quick overview of the, the actual piece. So you can see it in the middle, and hopefully this is a little bit of a teaser for some of the articles that we'll be releasing over the next six weeks, as well as the videos that we're going to be posting on our YouTube channel of these specific watches in depth. So I'll move them down. Maybe you can see them on the table a little bit more uh, of the watches to come here. Um, but um, I'm obviously going to flip perspectives so you can take a look at these pieces. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I'm incredibly excited to jump into these six watches with you. I know I typically have four watches that we jump into before we do in-depth videos on each of the pieces, but I'm so excited to to share these these watches with you. They really are um, really interesting, very interesting pieces of watchmaking history and unique in, in their own rights. The first watch I want to share with you, we'll start from left to right here, we'll go left to right, is this um, really interesting uh, Bulova nicknamed the Ashford. So the 1950s were full of design brilliance and I think Bulova, the Bulova Ashford is a really great example of that. This Bulova was manufactured in 1950 based on the serial number on the uh, case back of this watch. The watch has a 10 karat um, rolled gold case and there is some wear as you can see on the top of the lugs um, and as well as on the, uh, on the, on the case back. Uh, but really the case stands out because of these really unique knotted lugs that you see um, uh, featured on this watch. The watch has a really nice cream pipe pan dial with applied gold hour markers. And the watch is running on the caliber 10 BC manual wind movement. As I mentioned, I really think the, the design of this watch is really cool. And, you know, I think lug design is a way that you can enjoy watches, kind of similar to the Benrus with those um, really cool twisted lugs that we, we showed um, a couple videos ago. The next piece that we have is this really, um, really, really beautiful Longines. This is a reference 2183, if I can get it to focus here. Um... This is a reference 2183 manufactured by Longines. Uh, Longines is without a doubt uh, one of the best watch manufacturers of the 20th century. The, this Longines was manufactured in 1943 and um, the watch has a uh, 10 karat gold filled case that is in really nice condition. The case features uh, a little bit of polishing as you can see on the on the top of the lugs. Um, the upper section of the watch, and if you look at the, the upper section of this watch, has a coin edge finishing to it, while the rest of the case has a, a smooth, polished finishing to it. The watch features these really cool, short, um, fin-shaped lugs that angle towards your wrist. The watch has a very nice uh, cream dial with gold applied hour markers in sort of this Art Deco font and has a subsidiary seconds dial. The watch hands are long and thin, and the watch runs on the caliber 10L manual wind movement that we have spoken about a few times on Life in the Wrist as um, one of the movements that has been used in Longines watches and sort of like a progression for these watches. So a really nice Longines and, and at 34 millimeters, I think a, a really beautiful example. The next piece is a really nice Tudor reference uh, 7809 Oyster Automatic. Tudor, the sister brand of, this is a company of Rolex, produced exceptional watches throughout their history. This Ro uh, Tudor was manufactured in uh, the 1950s, and the watch has a 10, 18 karat gold case that is in good condition in the infamous Oyster case 
has obviously a stainless steel case back. There is um, so there are signs that this watch has been polished, as you can see by the lugs and overall case. Um, but the case maintains an overall attractive look to it. The watch has a white creamy dial with recessed hour markers and printed Tudor name. The watch hands have these are uh, sorry in uh, sword shape, and there is an arrow seconds hand. The watch runs on the caliber 390 movement, which is quite a um, quite an infamous movement. Uh, manufactured, I think, released in 1950. Um, Manufactured in the same plants as other Rolex models, so makes this watch a really um, iconic uh, piece. And uh, you know the the caliber 390 butterfly um, automatic movement is is um, one to be spoken about. The next watch is probably a piece you've never seen before. This is an Ernst Borel uh, cocktail. It's it's the the model name is the cocktail, but. Um, many people have nicknamed, if I can get this to focus, and this is a tough one because of the sapphire used on this watch, um, it's nicknamed the Kaleidoscope. So, it's a brand that not many collectors have probably heard of or have in their collection, but they did produce some exceptionally interesting pieces. The cocktail Kaleidoscope was many, this cocktail Kaleidoscope was manufactured in, 19, in the 1960s, and the watch has this really interesting gold shell case. Um, with sapphire crystals on both sides of the watch, so you can see the movement straight through the crystal. The watch movement and dial sit at the center of this watch with hour markers in red that sort of circle the outside of the see-through case. You then have these hour markers on the outside of the case that are sort of in the center of the sapphire sandwich. The watch's hands are red, arrows with the kaleidoscope disc at the center of the watch that turns as sort of the seconds indicator. And so you can see it going right there. The watch has these really um, interesting long claw lugs that make the watch sit a little bit larger. I think this watch is 32 millimeters in diameter, but with these longer lugs um, makes it sit um, a little bit larger on the wrist. As you saw, the watch is running on a manual wind movement. This is an ETA-based uh, movement uh, from the 1960s. Such a unique way of telling time and also, I think, just a unique way of designing a case. I'm very excited to jump into that piece. Moving on to the second to last piece in the lineup today, we have a really cool Elgin so sometimes something sometimes moving away from the beaten path in collecting can be exciting, and I think this Elgin is a good representation of that. This Elgin was manufactured in the 1950s. The watch has a 10 carat um, a 10 carat rolled gold case in good condition. Uh, as you can see, the case is in overall decent condition. There is some wear on it. The lu the the lugs of this watch are short and um, sharp. The watch features a really interesting sort of sunburst light gray dial with gold applied hour markers and Elgin name. The watch has this rec has rectangular hours and minutes hands that match the overall shape of the case as well as the hour markers. The watch also has a date complication at three o'clock with gold applied uh, with a gold applied hour window. The watch is running on an automatic movement, and one of the unique things about this piece is, as you can see, a hobnail finishing to the top of this case, which I think gives it a really interesting look to it. As I mentioned, off the beaten path for vintage collectors, but a really beautiful piece nonetheless. The last piece I want to discuss today is a really nice um, Bulova. So not only is the Bulova SVP1 uh, an attractive looking watch, it has a pretty well documented history and there are a lot of really cool advertisements you can see online. This Bulova was manufactured in 1960 and the watch has a steel case that is extremely thin. Uh, when I say thin, I'm gonna turn it on its side and you're probably gonna be amazed at how thin this is. Just look how thin that watch movement, that, that case is. The steel case um, 
is in good overall condition. Um, I think it looks uh, extremely attractive and overall, uh, I'd say pretty light, pretty minimal polishing on this uh, on this piece. Has a really sharp appearance, especially with the steel case. The watch has these very um, long, sharp, straight lugs. As you can see, they, they don't angle very distinctively towards the wrist. It's funny, the camera stopped focusing on the watch because it's it's so thin, it, it, it focused on a different watch. Um, the, the crystal does have a small crack down here at five o'clock. Um, the watch features a really nice white dial that has aged to a cream tone over time. The dial has applied hour markers, sword hands, as, and a subsidiary seconds um, at six o'clock. The watch runs on the caliber 11 AF movement, which allows this piece to be as thin as it is. I think it's a really attractive piece, and on this gray strap, I mean, what a combination. So those are the six watches we're going to be covering um, over the next six weeks on Life on the Wrist. I'm excited to jump into each of their histories and their movements. So hopefully this was a nice teaser for you. And I hope you'll enjoy the coverage of these pieces in the weeks to come. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these pieces that we're going to be covering on LifeOnTheWrist.com as well as the Life on the Wrist YouTube channel. As you probably can see, there is so much variety in these. You can go from something as simple and classic as this steel Bulova SVP-1 to a really interesting uh, Bulova with these knotted lugs, which I think is really beautiful. Um, but then there's a Tudor Oyster, and I think this Longines is one of the most exceptional, at least case design watch long, uh, Longines that I, that I have found. The 2183 reference is really cool. And then you have something as interesting as this uh, Ernst Borel uh, uh, cocktail kaleidoscope with its its center seconds um, kaleidoscope um, display, which I think is just so so unique, um, and uh, of course an absolute pleasure to watch. So I'm very excited to, to jump into these pieces with you a little bit more in depth. But I hope this at least gave you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be covering over the next six weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, as always, um, I think we're going to have some really cool videos to come. So uh, let me know in the comment section below which one of these pieces you're excited to see first. I'm sure I might look in the comment section and pick one of uh, those watches as the first one to cover next week. So let me know in the comment section below which one you want me to cover first. And if you have one of these pieces, I'd love to hear your thoughts about wearing it on an ongoing basis or having it in your collection because I do think that's helpful information for me that I can cover on our in-depth videos. If you are new to Life on the Wrist, be sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with a friend who might be interested in watches. Be sure to check out lifeonthewrist.com for more watch content from us over here. Um, and if you wouldn't mind liking this video, it really does help me out. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.